hundreds of millions of kilometers in deep space. After surviving a blazing descent through a dangerously thin atmosphere, humans have finally landed on Mars. It is the most dangerous mission in the history of space exploration and the most compelling, the search for life on another planet. Are there others out there and what are they like? Are we the descendants of microbes that somehow travel from Mars to the Earth? Every minute on Mars will cost half a million dollars, but the real price may be measured in lives. If we're going to find life on Mars, it's going to be a very difficult search. We have to learn a lot more about life in extreme environments on Earth. Around the globe, researchers hunt down the ultimate survivors, bacteria, clinging to life in the driest place on Earth or the desolate frozen rim of an arctic crater, or deep underground in the far reaches of spectacular caves. Bacteria can be very resilient. Could they survive in the lack of an atmosphere, in the high radiation, the very dry conditions on the surface of Mars? Life forms we may not understand, and perhaps should fear, any bacterial life that might exist on Mars really could be hazardous to the human population. Could Martian microbes wipe out humankind? For the first humans on Mars, the race to find life may, in the end, threaten their own. Every day on Mars has deadlines and mounting pressure. Astronauts have to cover huge distances in a merciless, poisonous atmosphere. They must search for life on a seemingly dead planet. Water is the key ingredient to sustain life, but that disappeared from the surface of Mars billions of years ago. So astronauts will search the dry beds of ancient rivers and lakes. But where should they dig for those precious samples? That's what scientists are investigating in the Canadian Arctic near NASA's Houghton Crater Research Station. They call this place Mars on Earth because it has so many similar features. A perfect stage to rehearse the search for life on the Red Planet. One of the most uh exciting things that you experience in a place like Devon Island is that every step you take, you are faced with uh, a Mars wonderland, catching insights into how we might explore Mars and how to search for life there. So Mars has a vast canyon system with many tributary canyons. Uh, it's still a mystery as to how they formed exactly. One theory is that they were formed just as they were on Devon Island, carved out by the movement of large bodies of ice. And there's another striking similarity. We found astonishing resemblances between the valley networks on Mars and the valley networks that we see here on Devon Island, formed a long time ago by the melting of a large ice sheet that covered all of this land. And so we are wondering now if some of the ancient valley networks that we see on Mars might have formed by ice sheets that are now gone from the surface of Mars. But the most famous Martian feature of Devon Island is Houghton Crater, one of the best preserved large impact craters on Earth. If there's anything alive on Mars, odds are it's bacteria. Canadian Space Agency's geologist Gordon Ozinski agrees. What he discovered here may change the way astronauts search for them in the thousands of craters that pockmark the face of Mars. At first glance, it seems impossible that anything could survive in this polar desert. But under 90% of the rocks are colonies of a green bacteria. They're there because underneath this rock, they're protected from the intense UV radiation. It's a slightly warmer, wetter environment. These bacteria are thriving today because 23 million years ago, 
An asteroid struck Devon Island exploding with a force of three million atomic bombs. It blasted a crater larger than the island of Manhattan and deeper than the Grand Canyon. Boulders the size of buses were thrown 10 kilometers from the impact. Billions of tons of fractured rock were heaved up, forming these huge gray hills. All life in the area was vaporized in a flash. Every Martian crater was created in the same catastrophic fashion. But a few thousand years after the impact, a crater may actually be more suitable for life than the surrounding land. Now this is a very interesting rock we have here. The impact event put basically bubbles into the rock so that life could invade there, so that these bacteria could actually survive by living about a millimeter or two within the actual rock. On early Mars, um, the underside of rocks and within the cracks within the rocks would be a great place for life to thrive where it's protected from the intense cold and the intense radiation. Life probably reappeared in Houghton Crater around one of these strange orange mounds, the remnants of hot springs which formed after the impact. There, bacteria found two key ingredients for life, water and warmth. The same might have happened in Martian craters. The structures that we see in here uh, are indicative of life, and uh, maybe on Mars, hydrothermal sites will also be some of the best candidates to, to search for life. And one um, really great thing we've been able to do here is to map out where in the crater these vents are found. And um, amazingly enough, they're just around the crater rim. So on Mars, you could just send a rover or a human to the outer edge of these craters to look for signs of these hydrothermal vents. The closer you look, you can find life surviving in all these places where you never would have thought it could survive. Uh, it's going to be exactly the same as the first astronauts on Mars. Most scientists believe Mars was warmer billions of years ago and its craters filled with water. If so, they'd be an ideal place for life to take hold. Water has now disappeared from the surface of Mars, but fossilized Martian life might be buried at the bottom of those dried up lakes. What would be preserved at a site like this? Uh, what would we have to look out for if we were to search sediments on Mars? The answer may lie at the bottom of British Columbia's Pavilion Lake. For years, Researchers like Darlene Lim, a Canadian expert in ancient lake beds, have been diving here, studying some amazing 10,000-year-old carbonate formations. These coral-like spires could be living examples of some of the oldest forms of life on Earth, and also possibly on Mars. The first time I saw these structures, it was completely shocking. Carbonate formations are found in many lakes, but those discovered here are among the largest in the world. Structures like this can only form on a planet with large bodies of liquid water. Finding similar fossilized reefs on Mars would prove it was once warm and wet enough to sustain life. Problem is, so far, space probes have been unable to detect large amounts of carbonate on Mars. Maybe it is that we're just not looking for them properly. 